Welcome to Meanwhile, the Castle Podcast. I'm Queen Deborah. I'm Queen Emily. And we are Queens of Our Castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. This is episode 56, and it is June something? 29th? 29th. 29th. 20th? 30th? It's Monday, June 29th or 30th. Doesn't matter. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter. 2020. And we're back. And we're here! Yay! We're, here. Yay. <laughs> we're we're wearing our beautiful patriotic garb yes. because if you can't tell from our accents, we're, we're from America. We're American. <laughs> <laughs> and this weekend is Independence Day that we celebrate, and we love it. Yes, very we much. We are very patriotic, and so we had to put on all of the red, white, and blue. So I think you even said that in the very first episode of our podcast. You said something about being unabashedly patriotic. If I didn't, I should have. Right. So that's who we are. Here we are. <laughs> so let's see. We have a Facebook group that yes. um, I sometimes go there. <laughs> No, I, I regularly there. post on Sunday. We have we kind of have an update that we do, and sometimes on Fridays, and mm -hmm. some fun things going on, fun chatter, and that is a nice place with nice people that yes. I just love dearly. And it's a place where you hear from us for hours, and now we get to hear from you. So you get to yes, go it's far more our our friends who share than it is us. us sharing. Which yeah, is that's great. that's the point where you can go and share all about mm -hmm. the things you're working on, mm -hmm. and. There are no show notes. We just tell you about it. And yep. that is what we do <laughs> because that's enough work. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so let's get started. We have life update, um, finished objects, a lot of sewing ones this time, um, works in progress. And this time we are going to have a snippets from the past segment and followed by shop reviews. Yep. That's okay. right. Great. Okay, I did that all in my brain except for the date. I'm so proud of you. I didn't have to look at any notes. Good job. That may have been the first time ever. Well, <laughs> I didn't get the date, so we won't even go there. Okay, <laughs> what have you been up to, Emily? Well, I've been working like a dog. <laughs> I've just been so busy. But um, things have been really good here. We've all been healthy as far as our immediate family. We've had lots of extended family. Our parents, my brother-in-law and my our sister who've been having health issues um but only our sister was because of the pandemic mm -hmm. the rest of them all are just life. health issues and life and so that's been a challenge but um in our immediate family we've been all healthy and well and working hard and you know things are going fairly well as well as they can be in the world as it is right now um We've been doing a lot of gardening and it's nice because my garden, once we got hot here, it takes off. Oh crazy. my word, it exploded. So I have now reached the point of the year, which actually came a little early this year, where the nightly question is, what would you like to have for dinner with your zucchini? Yes. <laughs> and so we've been just eating a lot of zucchini. And um, so the garden has been going really well. And I haven't had as much time as I would like for my crafting and making, um, but I've just been doing a lot of yarn dyeing and lots of heroic youth work. Um, for those of you who followed us on this podcast for a long time, you've heard about heroic youth all the time. And since this year is completely different, um, we're not doing in-person events. We're doing an online, whole online experience, which is kind of like a summer long escape room. But with principles. So that's, that's kind of that's really fun. It's that's it really is fun. fun, but it's so much work because we're just writing, 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 writing all the time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um try to think if there's anything else. We're planning a vacation coming up. Gonna do some camping and anyway, life is good. That sounds good. How about you guys? We have also been doing lots of yard work. Mm -hmm. If you follow me on Instagram, I've posted some updates here and there where we have torn everything out and people are like, why are you doing that? Because everything looked great before, but it's because we do crazy things. So <laughs> we have been in the garden and in the yard just cleaning things up and starting some areas over. And my garden has also started to take off. We had mm -hmm. a really bad hailstorm that... Mm -hmm 
ripped all of the plants to shreds and in the past the plants haven't recovered but this year I think all but my, maybe my bell peppers have recovered and I think today we'll pick our first zucchini. Yay! Okay. And then it's all zucchini all from where? Once you get <laughs> so, the first one. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Everybody lock your doors, lock your windows because you might get zucchini. We always joked left. about that that when you're in the church parking lot and when you go to church on Sunday, be sure to lock which, your doors. Yeah, then be sure to lock your doors so people don't leave zucchini, leave zucchini in your car. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> just magically appears. <laughs> so um, we've already harvested egg, not eggplant, um, artichokes, mm -hmm. and lettuce, and snow peas and sugar snap peas, and mm. I just made a big batch of fresh um, pesto. Mm. One of my friends said, that looks healthy because <laughs> it's so green. <laughs> yeah, it Margaret, is. Margaret, so I don't good. know if you've had pesto before, but if you haven't, it's something you need to experience. It's delicious, mm -hmm. especially with all the garlic. So, <laughs> um, yes, and I will say that with everything shutting down over the last several months, I have never been more thankful for my personal library mm -hmm. because all of a sudden the libraries are closed and I'm like, what are we going to do for our books? And then I realized I have been cultivating a personal library for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. And now I have fully come in to that time where it shows how important it is to have a personal library. And my girls are like, oh, I want to read something. I'm like, I have something for you. Let's go browse through the shelves. It's like know. knitting from your stash. It's yeah. reading from your stacks. Yes, reading you from go. your stacks. So, <laughs> so, and we've also um, enhanced the library since then with probably mm -hmm. two dozen more books. Um, but I always love to read the Chronicles of Narnia. And I just, I read The Last Battle. And that's the final book in the series and immediately started from number one, which isn't the first book that was written, but the first book in chronological order. And I started reading this one again, and it is The Magician's Nephew. And I just finished it yesterday. So good. So I picked up today, Wild Swans. I am so excited for you to read this book. Deborah. I've read it before. Oh, have you? Okay. Yeah, good. I've read it before. That's right. This yeah. one and Red Scarf Girl. Red Scarf Girl um, is a much faster read. It's like that big. <laughs> no, like that big. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. But but they both are very valuable um, reads. So mm. I just started that one. Isaac is reading Wild Swans right now, and so, and then he and I are talking about it all the time. There's a lot to discuss in that book. It's so powerful. Yeah. yeah. So powerful. So, that's what I've been up to. Um, wait, wait, that's not all. No, no, that's not all. I also have been working on filming and editing videos for a another YouTube channel where I can share some of the other things that I do that we don't share here. So more of my sewing and crafting and gardening and um, all other things. But uh, it is called, if you want to go, I may have the first video up by the time this goes up. We'll see. Um, it is called My Fairy Tale Chronicles. And so I'm really excited. And I also have a Instagram account by that name. So you can go to my fairy tale chronicles on Instagram and follow me there, which used to be Indigo Chicken Dolls that <laughs> has been renamed. So it's you been probably reborn. Are, it's been reborn <laughs> from the wait, no. Actually, I'm gonna tell you a really interesting story. Okay. Indigo Chicken Dolls Instagram account a year ago just was deleted by Instagram. We won't go into all of that, but with no explanation. It just was gone for like five, six months. Then one day, if you have more than one account, then you know there's like a drop down menu where you can choose which account you want to sign into or comment through. And um, I get on to my Instagram and in the drop down menu, it's there. It just showed up. Like, what? It said it had been closed for no reason. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. And it's there. Okay. And then I realized I didn't really need it any anymore. You know, for five months, 
Well, like for the first two months, it was hard to be without all of my past history where I could refer back to it. Um, but I kind of got used to it. So I decided to just delete the account. So I went in and did that. And a couple of weeks ago, I went into the drop down menu and there it was again. <laughs> I'm like, it wants to be here. So I'm just going to rename it. There you go. That's the story. Also on Instagram, just a quick note that I am hosting a sock along. So it is, I'm calling it the Yarnberry Sock Along. And if you are on Instagram, you can come and post there, um, post on Instagram and use that hashtag Yarnberry Sock Along to share your socks that you're knitting. And I'm doing weekly prize drawings and they include patterns, they include um, charms and sometimes yarn. And we're going to just do this for a while and see how it goes. But I love seeing all of your socks. And um, there was something. Oh, yes. If you're knitting with my yarn, you get an extra entry into that drawing that I do weekly. And if you're knitting with my yarn and my patterns, then you get two entries. So uh, two extra entries. So it's really fun. We've already done our first prize drawing. We I gave away three sock patterns. And um, it's been really fun to see all the socks that everybody's making. So definitely come and join us there. It would be a lot of fun to see what you're making. And so to uh, enter, you, tag you just uh -huh, you just post on Instagram and use hashtag. the hashtag Yarnberry Sock Along. And then I'm just watching that hashtag and using that to make um, to do the drawings. Awesome. Yep. All right. Okay. So. Let's get started with finished objects. Which I only have a couple this time. You have more than I do. Do you want to start? All right. I will start with a pair of socks. Hey. I didn't knit an entire pair of socks in the last month. Don't be deceived. It's from a sock blank <laughs> or from a sock tube. Nice. Um, Sweet Haven Arts. This is the last sock tube that I had ordered from her. And this was my Willy Wonka colorway. And she had divided the yarn into two tubes for me. And I picked up for cuffs, um, toes, and then I cut in for an afterthought heel. And the toe and the cuff are from the Romeo colorway by Yarn Prairie Yarn. Fun. That's one of my first colorways ever. I know. And I knit Jason a pair of socks mm -hmm. from it. And this is what I had left over. <laughs> and then this was a mini um, of mine. And this one was strawberry I believe it doesn't have the speckles though it can't be strawberry because it doesn't have the little speckles <laughs> maybe it was strawberry without speckles I don't know <laughs> but I finished that if you're like me you have just random bits of like seconds around your house too oh yes so many of them I probably did do that like I was testing out the color and then decided mm -hmm. to add the speckles or something yeah. like that um but that was my last sock tube. Fun. I love them. They're so fun. They're they very are. fun. And I don't know if she's still doing um, like custom tubes mm -hmm. for people, but she's on Instagram as Sweet Haven Arts. And so if you're interested, you can check with her and she lives locally near me in Utah. That's awesome. Okay, there's my first one. Great. So here's my first one, also a pair of socks. And my husband already wore these, so they're a little baggy, but these are knit from Yarnaceous Fibers in the Anning colorway. There's the label. And I love this yarn, and my husband loves them. He's already worn them a few times, so worn and washed and worn again. Um, and I just knit a three by one rib in the sock so it, it was kind of just my normal formula that I used for him but I carried along with a three by one rib and he really likes a ribbed sock I think that if I were to knit a lot of socks for him which I probably won't knit a ton um but I would I need I, I probably will keep doing ribbed socks for him they seem to be the ones he goes to the most so those were fun those were really fun so you started on the cuff with two by two. Yeah, I did two by switched. two at the cuff, but you didn't have, you could do, you could do that four by or three by one all the way to the top if you want. I just know he likes it a little bit more of a pull in at the top than what you would get by a uh, 
three by one. I keep wanting to say four by one, but it's a three by one. Um, so I did a two by two at the top and then just moved into a three by one for the rest of the, the leg and then the top of the foot. Um, but I left the bottom of the foot in plain stock in it. So pretty basic. Those were fun, fun and done. All right. So as far as finished objects in knitting goes, that's it. That's it. <laughs> now we're moving on to the next subject, which is pillowcases. Okay, I have to, I have an entire basket here. Okay, let me pull up. Okay. So when Emily and I do something, we don't typically just like say, wouldn't it be fun to, instead we're like, let's delve in, um, dive in the deep end and go all out. It's so, because we have OTTS. <laughs> over the top syndrome. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So we decided to make really fun, brightly patterned pillowcases, but add crochet edging to them, just like grandma used to do. <laughs> so here's three of mine. I haven't finished all of these. I finished um, one, two, three, four, five. And then I have three more that are ready to add the borders to. So let's see yours, Emily. So I've got these three that are finished. Got this one and this one. I love this fabric, but this one's my very, very favorite. I love it so much. <laughs> And then I've got these three that are, they, they don't have yet the hem stitching on, the pillowcase is sewn, but I need to do the hem stitching and then the crocheted edges. Oh, this has birds on it. Isn't that fun? That's really pretty. And then this one. And I really love this one. It's kind of dainty and modern and I don't know, just like it. Those are fun. So I have put our pillow cases on. I went and bought all new pillows so we could have nice fluffy ones. And I put them on the couch in our living room to encourage more summer naps. And my friend said, the nappage situation in your home is going to greatly <laughs> increase. Yes. So, so I just ripped them off of the pillowcases and brought them here. So they're pretty wrinkly. Here's the first or one of them. And another, I used one thread on the first row mm -hmm. and then changed to another one here. This one's my favorite. I love the lime green mm -hmm. with this blue. And then of course I had to do a kind of patriotic one with mm -hmm. red and blue and little white elements to it here. And we have friends that were joining in with us. We kind of had a little friend group make along and we've all made some, some more than mm -hmm. others. Mandy. Oh my made goodness. Like 20. <laughs> Before I even started my She's first like one. lightning. Oh, I forgot. And then I made this one. Oh, that's a fun one. So I. <laughs> There's all, all your girl's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I actually have recorded a tutorial and I have, it will be in two sections. The first one will be on sewing the pillowcase and adding the hem stitch detail to the top so that you can then go and attach the crochet edge. And then the second one will be on crocheting a border. So I'm hoping that that's the first video that it will be up and ready to go on my channel on my fairy tale chronicles. Um, by the time this video goes up. So you can go and check that out. Here's my other three fabrics that I'm, wait, three? No, what, what? Apparently you brought two. No, three. Oh, there it is, I'm like, what? One, I think I showed this one. Oh yeah. I love this I one. I love that one so much. Are you gonna do yellow? Tell me you're gonna do yellow on I don't that. know, I have, I'll show you in a second. <laughs> and three here, I have a basket of my threads <laughs> that I went and bought because I'm like, oh, I should go get a couple. <laughs> That's what happened to me. But see, <laughs> this yellow I've got like right 15. Here, this yellow. So, 
So where's that? Come on, come on, Deborah. Look at the, oh, come on. You it's know gotta what? be yellow. <laughs> I haven't done any pink edging yet though. Oh well, and that's a really good one for pink. So I don't know. By the way, here's that sagey. See, I wanted to do oh, um I dropped it. I wanted to do a two color one on this. See, isn't that like the perfect that will sage? Be beautiful. Thanks. Yep. I was gonna loan that to you, so Thanks. take it. <laughs> okay. All right. So there is our first batch of sewing slash crochet. And that's yours. I need to return it. Oh, I was going to say, wait, I thought I <laughs> had a green. Thanks. Ed. We're just passing around the crochet thread. Yeah, because you only need a small amount. So let's so see. So fun. The very, my favorite part was coming up with borders. So mm. if you go and look mm. online, it can be hard to find fun borders that aren't overly elaborate this wide or um too i don't know it, it was tricky to try to find some or ones that you could see mm -hmm. i wanted to buy a book oh, speaking of libraries being closed our libraries recently opened for like curbside pickup only mm -hmm. and i got this book and there's lots of different designs so if you're looking for a book that one looks pretty yeah, that's one of these tabs here that I mm -hmm. have. If you're looking for a book of borders, um, I wanted to check it out before I purchased it. And I I may, I haven't decided if I'm going to purchase this one or not yet. But mostly I tried making things up or I found like a picture of one and did my best to follow it. And that's what this one was. And this is my favorite And that's border. the one that I copied for this one. I copied your... You wrote down your instructions and I did what you said. Yeah. So Yay. Go. Anyway, so the pillowcases are really fun to make. They really are. And I have more sewing. Yes. And I, I the fun thing is that there's a lot of crocheting. And I think part of that was inspired by this. I've got a lot of crochet stuff going oh, on. Okay. So. <laughs> and so once you started making some pillowcases. I just got really crochet-y all of a sudden. It's kind of funny how that happens. I've just been wanting to sew all the things. So in one of our comments on um, our last episode, we had a couple of people that were asking to see more sewing. Here you go. This is for you. <laughs> well, it's actually for me, but you can enjoy it too. Okay. So I have been on the quest, on a quest to make all of the fun, summery, flowy dresses. Um, that I can manage this year. We'll see. But I started last episode, made one for Nadia and shared that. And then I made a dress for me using this pattern. This is Simplicity 8910. And I did view B with these sleeves. Okay, I made all sorts of modifications. I'll show you the dress in a second. <laughs> but View B for the length, I still added like an inch and a half because this was too long. This was a little bit shorter than I wanted. I did these sleeves, but instead of putting in darts, I gathered them into the cuff. And I also raised and brought the neckline in a little bit because I don't want them out so far and down so low. So I used, oh goodness, let's see if I can reach this. You can do it. My left shoulder still doesn't want to work. <laughs> It's improving little by little, but I have to be careful with it. So I used a white linen with black polka dots. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then I lined the bodice and the skirt with a white cotton. And I pre-washed all of these and then dried them so that they would wash and dry evenly. And the thing I love about linen is, I mean, like I love hate it is the crinkliness, the wrinkliness mm. of it. So I like the wrinkles that look like they've come naturally from wearing it, but not the wrinkles that look like that's been laying on my floor for the last two months. <laughs> Which so, happens a lot of times when you sit. Yeah. And it gets wrinkled. Well, you know, like when the whole certain... thing gets bunched up, like, you know, uh, I don't, yeah. I don't love that, but I still do love how you'll get little crinkly, like all over, but not, like I said, like this has been in a ball <laughs> on the floor and I've been walking on it kind of wrinkled so <laughs> well Deborah if you went through on your clothes on the floor and walk on them you wouldn't have this problem so I 
for like the sleeves and some areas where it's hard to iron, I have a, a garment steamer that I use. And here's the best part, pockets. So I do have a picture of me wearing it, but it's terrible. So instead, if I have, I think I still have a video mm -hmm. of me dancing around in it, mm -hmm. showing it off to some of my friends. So you get to see me dancing around in it and twirling around all happy. Look at me, ladies. I made a new dress. It's linen, this lightweight, it's dark. It's very late at night. Okay, not very late. It's like 9.30. But, so you can't necessarily see that it's a semi sheer and then I lined it with a white cotton and it has pockets, two pockets and it's swishy. Wait, I'm gonna stand up here. And it's swishy. It's nice and long for summer so that it's just lovely. Okay, I had to share it with you. It's so cute on you. And it's funny cause I don't know that I would have thought of, I don't know, the linen. I I have this weird thing about linen too. And I mm -hmm. think it's because whenever you feel it, when it's new, it feels so stiff. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel comfortable and yeah, like it's going to, but it has nice. such a nice drape to it. When you wash it and the more you wash it, it's it like gets magic. softer and softer. And, oh, I love it. <laughs> and when I wore it out, um, I felt like a movie star. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not quite. I just felt pretty, pretty. I just felt, felt pretty, pretty, pretty. You felt glam. And it, it's lovely. It even inspired me to go buy some new summer hats. I do not think I'm a hat person. You but I've decided I'm going to be a hat person, whether I feel like one or not. And just wear them because I love hats. So I've got a assortment of hats for the summer. So there's my first dress. Did you have other sewing or things? I have one. So I made a dress for my daughter, Ar not Aria, Abby, the other daughter. <laughs> she really wanted a, a light summer dress as well. So we'll put some pictures in here. But she, um, she picked out the fabric. Her favorite color is army green. And... It's not as much my favorite color, but she <laughs> loves it. So my children have all gone through the army green phase. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so we we made this dress for her, and um, I didn't use a pattern. Um, she had another dress that she really liked the fit of, and so I just kind of copied that. So um, that's what we did, and she really likes it. She was wearing it yesterday too, and she just, in fact, she's wearing it yesterday, and she's wearing it today. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds like Abby. <laughs> that's okay. If they like it and they're happy with it. Yeah. That's but I, I need like to it. make her some more dresses because she really loves them. She'll put like little, she's such a like active, like half the time she's upside down kind of girl. <laughs> so she will wear the dresses and she'll wear like little bike shorts underneath them. And she just lounges all over the place. Has a that's great time. Good. That's good. Um, Nadia, we, we put a swing in our tree. We had one before but it was toddler size. So <laughs> we no longer have children that are toddler size. So we finally put up an adult size swing and it's cute to see Nadia. She goes and puts on one of her dresses that I've made <laughs> and she takes a book out with her early in the morning. She gets up early and then she made a little flower crown. Sometimes she'll put that on <laughs> and she goes and sits out on the swing with her book. She doesn't really actually read, but what she's doing is like, this is the ideal. She's creating the mood. <laughs> yeah. And she'll just sit out there and then come in all happy. And I love it. I love it. <laughs> she's, it, it's like the secret garden when yeah. they're swinging out in the secret garden in yes. that movie that was the Maggie Smith one. That one. That's the good I, one. I think I have that one. That's the good one. It's those. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> uh, We're sewing. Okay. Made another dress. I used McCall's pattern this time, 5805, and I did this, just a minute, I did view C with view B sleeves, and this time I used a cotton fabric that makes me think of the seaside. Like, this mm -hmm. has got to be, like, very kind beachy. of vintage seaside resort. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> oh wait, no, I did different sleeves. I wanted to do those sleeves, but I ran out of fabric. So I did flutter sleeves. Mm -hmm. I feel ridiculous in flutter sleeves. I don't feel ridiculous in this dress as a whole, <laughs> but in flutter sleeves. I don't know why. I don't know why either. They look fine. They look. It just, it seems like it's 
over the top. <laughs> but you like tailored things. And so that's why you like things that are more tailored. And let's see, what did I do here? I added this part right here to keep everything from... I don't know about you, if you ever do like crossover tops, dresses, mm. all of those, they never, ever, ever stay in place. No. Do you ever have that happen? Like, it's just always a, a chance for a peep show. <laughs> My favorite crossover top has a tiny little snap yeah. right there and it just, and then it stays. Yep. But that's I just a good added idea. this in so now it won't move. And it's very long oh, and it has a ruffle on the bottom. There's the ruffle. That's fun. And it looks cute with a sun hat. And I feel fun wearing it, except for the sleeves are a bit over the top. <laughs> and the last one that I did was Nadia had been wearing her dress almost every single day that mm -hmm. I made. And I decided that for somebody who loves it that much, I will sew all of the fun things for her. So, <laughs> But my requirement this time was that I get to choose what I'm making. Because to have somebody else say, I want you to make this with this fabric and this fit. And, you know, you have no creative input and it just becomes a drudgery. So, so this time I made her this little jumper. That's so cute. And it goes down to just below her knee. Yes, it has this little cotton kind of trim on the bottom. Crochet trim, yeah. And I used their faux shell buttons. And the pattern that I used was a Butterick um, 6674 pattern. I actually lowered the front. I had to make so many adjustments on this bodice to fit her because she's still, you know, like a young teenager and her proportions are different they she doesn't fit in little kid stuff she doesn't mm -hmm. fit in adult stuff so I adjusted this and adjusted it and pinned it to her and changed things and then I added I had to in the end add a dart in here mm -hmm. um and I lined the bodice the the top of it so yes cute and then and this was a quilter's cotton fabric that I purchased from Joanne. But it has a shimmer to it. It does. A... And at first she didn't like it, but I thought she would because to me it's like fairy tale ish but now she loves it. And She told me she feels like um, Rapunzel entangled. That's fun. <laughs> and then for the top. No, Belle. It was Belle. Sorry. Yeah, Belle. Belle is her favorite Disney princess. It was Belle. And so that's, that's why I made this one specifically because mm -hmm. I knew that was her favorite. Um, then for the top, I used a costume pattern that was a Simplicity Renaissance costume pattern, and it's just a peasant style top, but I did add an inch and a half to the top because you can see that this is a very low <laughs> pattern. And, um, the pattern does not call for you to do a little ruffle. It looks like it has one on the pattern, but they didn't include it in the instructions. Mm. So, um, I did include that in here. And this is, uh, this fabric is a semi sheer and it's a hundred percent lyocell, if that's how you call it. I don't, I don't know how to say it. And I've never heard of that fabric before this year. Um, so I don't know anything about it, but I thought we'd try it out. It's a plant based <clears throat> that's similar to like a rayon. I love it. I love it. That is lovely. And pockets. That was <laughs> her favorite part. Two big pockets. Okay. Fun stuff. There's Fun my sewing. Dresses. There's the sewing. That's my finished objects. Awesome. Okay. That's great. That's all I have for finished objects as well. Okay, let's move into works in progress. Sounds great. All right. So crocheting. I want to talk about crocheting again. Um, I actually, I guess I don't have a ton of crocheting. I have some crocheting, but I have more planned. So... Um, I can say that I showed the giant between meal center piece doily last time and I have finished the crocheting, but it's in timeout because somehow my gauge changed from the center to the edge. You went from being more relaxed to being a little you're... stressed maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the outer several rows are too tight. 
and it's really hard to know that when the project is you know i you can't even, i can't even put my hands in the frame how big it is um because you're never laying it flat all the way so until i finished it and washed it and was starting to pin it out to block it and i couldn't so i put it in timeout i probably will someday come back to it <laughs> deborah had a good idea maybe i will just unravel several rows from the outside until, and just make it a smaller toily with a different change back you know back to the point where it's no know. longer too tight i know exactly where the problem lies too and i actually think it was because i was too loose in this one section where it's a lot of just chain stitches and then oh, anchoring yeah, and chain yeah. stitches and anchoring and so anyway that being said um the other night i was really cranky i don't know if you guys ever get that way but i was feeling really cranky and i needed to go to bed but instead i didn't i came down here and closed myself in my sewing room and locked the door so nobody could come and talk to me and i started crocheting another doily so this is the one i'm working on now and i will be honest i have no idea what the name of this pattern is because it's in russian and so I'm just working off a chart. I'm like, did Ethan translate it for you? No, nope, I found it on Pinterest. It was a chart and it was in Russian. And I just look at the look at the chart and I'm crocheting it. So, but it's a pretty one. I really like it a lot. Once you helped me understand charts for crochet, I realized that crochet is simple with a chart. Yes. With written instructions. I hate, no. It's it, so yeah. confusing. But with a chart, it's like, oh, it's just, it, essentially, it's a picture of exactly what you're yep. making. You can't, you can't go wrong. No. <laughs> it shows you the stitch and where the stitch is anchored and mm. what the kind of stitch is. And you just do it. And you could tell by looking at the chart. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so lovely. So. Yeah. So I definitely like charts when it comes to crochet. And I dislike written instructions other than. This is how you use this chart, mm -hmm. which is good because I have to show you some dream crocheting too. Because I just got this pattern <gasps> and it is so pretty. Oh. Let's see if you can show it. It's called um, Chelsea by Vicky Chan. This makes me think of Miss Fisher. Let's see if that, let's try a little bit more. Miss Fisher from Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Nope, let's try not showing you that part. Here we go. This is what I'm going to be making next. Oh, I love that. Isn't that lovely? And for my size, it uses three skeins of fingering weight yarn. So, so isn't that pretty? So it's not using like the thread. No, it's, it's fingering weight. And so you start with this. Sorry, let's see if I can get it again. There we go. This big square panel. And then you finish the back. You finish, well, you do that. And then you knit each of the fronts. Crochet. Crochet each of the fronts. <laughs> attach them together and then finish off the bottom and do some trim on the sleeves. Does it have a picture of the front? front? Yes. Let me get you a picture of the front. It's very... Oh, I love that. Oh, I may need to pick up more crochet. That will absolutely that kill my elbow. Elbow. It, it's not happening. I just probably not. It's not happening. It's okay. But There's it's beautiful. beautiful. They also make. show it worn upside down, but I don't understand the wearing things upside down craze. This is it worn upside down. It's like sure you can wear anything upside down. Is it going to look as pretty as the original? No, because it's just not. I like just that original is just that long drapey, the, lovely. Yeah. So anyway, I'm really excited about that. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do that one as soon as I can get some other projects finished, which I will show in a minute. I wonder what this jacket would look like upside down. <laughs> you should try it. I mean, you know, it's a craze. You just have a really big collar called the whole bottom and then it'll be a shrug. <laughs> okay, we'll see it. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. It really will. Oh, I, I mean, could tie the top together. Like, or, and around your neck. Wait, here's the problem. I can't get my left arm in thing because I can't use my shoulder. Okay. There you go. Now you have to okay. do wait, the... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. Is see? this feeling... You could totally wear it that upside down, Deborah. awkward. Yeah, see? And some wait, people love that. This is like a 1940s... Just a minute. <laughs> wait. It just needs a shawl collar kind of thing yeah. going. I've been wearing this wrong all this time. <laughs> See? 
I don't, I, I really don't get the craze, but it is funny how people do it a lot. A lot. Is this linen too? Um, I like actually, it. Actually, I don't know. I have no idea. It's cute. So there's a lot of things like that say ruffles. dry clean only. I promptly ignore that. <laughs> if it can't go in the washing machine, mm -hmm. I will not wear it. Uh, linen and rayon. Mm -hmm. Pretty. That's why I like it so much. There you go. All right. Okay. Now that we've interrupted your That's okay. Crocheting. I was talking about crocheting and I'm excited for that. Well, I think once that's you're done with it, other... you can model it right side up and upside down. <laughs> And we'll all vote on which one's better. <laughs> I probably will not wear it. Okay, upside if down. you're in our Facebook group, I want you to go try on some of your things upside down and send us yes! pictures. Yes, <laughs> please do, please do. Do a before, like a right side up and an upside down yeah. picture, side okay. by side. We'll have to create a post. I'll go and Kay. create a post of that. That will be so fun. <laughs> Show us the good ones. There's probably going to be some really good ones. Like this one wasn't actually Actually, that this bad. one wasn't bad. I was no. like, wait, this could, could <laughs> work. I mean, in the light of day going out in public, people would be like, hmm, She's got her jacket on inside down. Something's not right here. <laughs> <laughs> on the screen here, it wasn't too bad. But but I bet some of them will be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's do that. And And if you can find some great way of like styling it, then we can see how we can have multiple uses from our clothing. <laughs> okay, I have um, this pair of socks that I'm really, really close to being done. This is the Gathering Shell Socks by Emily. I happen to know the designer. She's pretty cool. Did I just finish another pair of socks that I've forgotten about? Never mind. You didn't do okay. another one of these. Okay. I honestly can't remember what I have done over the last month. You did no just idea. cast on. No, I haven't cast it on yet. I want to. Oh, you were going to. Okay. Oh, I haven't. So this is from my denim colorway. And this one was, I think I called it peaches and cream. It's what I um, dyed for my daughter's sweater. And I had some more of that. And I also dyed some for, for one of my friends. Um and this is for my mother to be more precise for my mother to give to somebody because i love her so much the mother <laughs> my mother not to somebody because we don't know the somebody <laughs> <laughs> um because i barely knit socks for anybody besides myself <laughs> okay well i knit for my husband and my children but mm -hmm. and for my mommy that's it that's where i draw the line um let's see i did i'm trying to remember actually i think i felt no i added one more pattern repeat than the pattern called for for the length of the sock and i did not an extra long cuff which i think i did um 30 rounds no i did like 28 i don't remember but i did a good amount actually i can tell you exactly how many because i took notes so i could do it oh i did 22 rounds so I did not do 30. It only took 20 grams of the main color for this sock. And this should fit a size eight and a half women's. And I did the 64, the medium size, the 64 stitch um, sock. And so it doesn't take a lot of yarn for me. When I do my socks, I do a 60 inch or a 60 stitch sock. And then I make the leg and the foot a little bit longer but it takes about the same amount of yarn. And so I have the first one done and I'm almost, I'm almost done with the foot. I tried last night to finish, but I can only do a little bit at a time. So, you know, I don't want to overdo my hands. There's, they're recovering my hands and my shoulder. So I'm trying to be very careful with them. So I didn't get it done in, in time for today because I'm just being careful, but I really want to get back to having three projects, not four. And I have another pair of socks I haven't worked on. And I have um, a sweater, the Spring in LA that I haven't worked on because I'm, I'm working on Ella's sweater. So, oh, I keep tingling. This yarn is twisty. So, I am working on, you have another one here? Why don't I have you a show yours? Okay. But I have to show my cute bag. Yes. Every now and again, I have to show it because it's so adorable. This is a Goldilocks and the Three Bears bag that I made several years ago. 
but I just think it's so adorable. I bought this at Pine Needles Fabric Shop at Gardner mm -hmm. Village. They have some of the cutest fabrics. It's it's a problem. And then I discovered a new fabric store. Oh no! And then I bought all sorts of things. What there. fabric store did you discover? I went with um, Margaret <gasps> oh, that's right. down in. Where is that? Is it in Provo? Is Maybe it Provo? I don't remember, but it was really fun. And An so hour bought, south of here. So I bought more fabrics for more pillowcases. I have I have three more pillowcases that I can begin once I finish these. There are so many fabrics coming out right now. Riley Blake, I think, fabrics that are all based on books. Oh, really? There are so many. And I want I all of those. them. Like I will what? have to send. I'm tr I am I don't remember, honestly. Um, I know I saw Anne of Green Gables and I bought some Anne of Green Gables, but there's more now. Um, I'm pretty sure there is. Oh, it's just gone from my head. I'll have, I'll have to look it yeah, up, but I'll yeah, you'll have to go go see. look them up, but oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm working on, do I have a pattern in here? No, it's in my phone. This is the Linum T. Super exciting. Look, it's a big rectangle or a big tube. Um, that... This fabric looks so fancy like a machine did it, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knit it. <laughs> You're a knitting machine. So this is the Linum T by Bristol Ivy. And I'm knitting this in DMC Natura Just Cotton. And this color is called Amaranto, which is color number 33. And I'm just in the boring part. You start at the bottom and then you just knit, knit, yep. knit, knit, but knit, look knit, at this. knit, knit. But your hands made I know. this gorgeous <laughs> drapey fabric. <laughs> Every once in a while, it just really strikes me how amazing knitting and crochet and things like that are. And right now it's hitting me. Like, I know that there's nothing fancy about it, but your hands It does have this. a nice it's drape so amazing. to it. I love it. I like this yarn, actually. I don't really generally enjoy working with cotton a lot, but this yarn has been very enjoyable to work with and hasn't made my hands tired. That's so good. that's been nice. I think it's, it's nice for summer. It just has a nice finish to it. It's not yeah. too shiny. I think that's what I'm but loving about this. It's kind it's of matte, just, but it's still polished, if that makes because sense. Because cotton also, also does not typically drape extremely well. Well, and, and again, I think is. it depends. Like there's kind of, you know, you get like um, some of the less expensive cottons, which are great, like peaches and cream or things like that, that you can make dishcloths. Those are like a different like application. That. Right. And they are cream. very, very matte. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's not any polish to yeah. them. They're kind of just... Because, yeah, the, the purpose for them is to Be have absorbent. a lot of absorbency. And yeah. then you have things like um, mercerized cotton, which are very shiny. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and then you've got this is a nice Even in between. Sometimes, depending on it, sometimes they are still stiff. Mm -hmm. uh, but this Although once you wash them, just like with, you know, like you, this kind of a thing is, is quite stiff. But once it is washed, it will... Soften. Just having a really nice, soft, um, and then you can starch it if you want. But anyway, so this has been really enjoyable for for me to work on um, when I need mindless knitting, you know, just pick it up and you're just knitting around and around. But I'm getting fairly close to where I will divide and I'll just, ha it has just a little cap sleeve and then some texture, which I will probably be changing at the top. So not super exciting, but... I'd like to finish it before summer is over so I could actually enjoy it in the yeah. summer. It's coming along. Right. And I think it's fun because look at the bag that you have and then look at the bag that I have. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> My last project that I am working on is the, the Whitmore sweater by... What's wrong with my brain? Amy. Uh, Amy <laughs> of Taylor Studios. And I have finished, I just um, finished the ribbing and bound off and I did a sewn bind off because it isn't too tight, it isn't too loose, it doesn't flare out at the edge. Mm -hmm. So it, you can just make it as stretchy as you need or as tight as you need. So, and it's pretty simple to do. The only thing is, is that you have to cut a big long 
um, strand and sew through and pull that through and it takes a long time especially for the first half second half not as much because you don't have as much to pull through but I did that with only the um, main yarn not the mohair mm -hmm. so because that was too much of the mohair trying to deal with that I just wove in the mohair and bound off so now I need to pick up this the stitches that I have on hold here and I think I've decided some of you have given me some suggestions sent videos but I think in the end I am going to do what I've done on my last one and I'm going to cast on stitches instead of picking up here and I will um, seam it together mm -hmm. at the end um, the issue that I typically have are these stitches right here and right here where it switches from going um, this direction on your needles to going this direction mm -hmm. um, that's where we ended up with the gaping holes and I try and go and like duplicate stitch to close those up but I think that's what I'm going to do so, cute. so this one I just need to finish so she can wear it in the fall since I didn't get it done in time for her to wear this at the beginning of the spring when mm -hmm. she could have still worn it because I'm just not that speedy of a knitter and I want to do other things too because I have lots of hobbies. You know the the cool thing is when you when you make things that I don't know there's some things that you make and then you use them and then you're kind of done with them but the thing I love about these handmade quality type things is you make them and then you use them and you know that you can keep them forever. Yeah, yeah. And you can use them. And, you know, someday your grandkids could use that. You know, they could just keep going. And uh, I love that. I really love that. I yeah. do. And it also is fun. Like, I enjoy yarn in, you know, this stage. I enjoy yarn in this stage. It's pretty. Then I mm -hmm. enjoy yarn mm -hmm. using it. And mm -hmm. then you can enjoy the project. For a long time, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to change it from this stage. Because what if I don't have the perfect project? But then... I'm like, but I enjoyed it like this. I enjoyed using it. I can still, mm -hmm. or it's like, I can still enjoy it. But then there's also always more beautiful yarn available. There really is. Like there will be mm -hmm. another one tomorrow that you're going to love just as much. So it's just so use it. True. Just use it. All right. I have one more. Yay! This one is so, so great. Back in last year, I knit a Hito Fude cardigan for my mother for Christmas. And I knit it in 13 days. I was so proud of that 13 days and um then I gave it to her and it didn't fit her <laughs> which I should have seen coming because it was too tight in the arms right here and since it's too tight in the arms with the style of this cardigan that meant I was going to need to unravel basically a completed sweater you can't just go and to undo just the sleeves so um, I planned to do that for a long time and then finally decided this is ridiculous. I am not unraveling the sweater. I will just knit her a new one with a different yarn. So the first yarn was some of Deborah's yarn in cream soda. And this is my yarn in Bronte. And so I am almost done. You can't really tell because you know how lace is. It's all crunched up. But I have two pattern repeats and then ribbing and then bind off left. It's Pretty. And um, this, this has match taken everything me. She wears. Yes, this color is very, very, very much. In fact, I have to say this. I say this is my Bronte colorway. It's actually a higher saturation of the same mix of dyes because I wanted it just a little more coral for her. So, anyway, so this is Hito Fude, and um, this is my third Hito Fude cardigan because I knit one for me and now two <laughs> with, with the idea of my mom. Um, what do can I need you, to say about you, that? Can uh, you stand to do any more of it? Because I think she'd like it a little longer. I probably can't. And it, it, it will be two more pattern repeats, which is uh -huh. about this much more length. Yeah. Then ribbing. And then you can't really tell, but this is the whole length of the yeah. sweater. It's actually longer than you think. Yeah. And um, I just remember she always so seems to be, get the long yeah. ones. I mean, this one, I'll make sure one. I could, I could keep going, but I'll make sure this I will is, probably. This is such her color, like the yeah. style. She's going to, the lace, she's going to love it. So anyway, I'm working on that and it has been now 
This is day 17. So oh, I didn't, Emily. I didn't. I'm embarrassed <laughs> for you. <laughs> but it's also two sizes bigger because I thought, oh, she needs more length too. Uh -huh. So um, anyway, there you go. Very pretty. It is really So fun. for every size you go up, add three more days, four more days. That seems fair. <laughs> for me, I'd be like, add another month. <laughs> I actually don't mind. So here I don't is, mind things taking time. I That's don't part of the enjoyment is just... Other than I just feel like, can I get her her sweater already? That was for Christmas. Yeah, if it's for somebody else, I feel like there's a deadline. Here's the length of it. Mm -hmm. So it's got some... Now it's shorter in the front, Yeah, it does come up. It Quite kind of like curves up towards the front. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Yeah, here's a picture of the front. Let's see if I can show without showing all the charts and everything. Come on. I have faith in you. I, I know I can do this, but I'm just like all thumbs right now. There we go. Here we go. Got it. Okay. So here is the front. I can't see what I'm doing. Pretty, huh? That is. It's pretty. It's so pretty. Wait, it's pretty what she's wearing it with. I need that dress I know. Now. It's like a linen. <gasps> I have. Gathered. I have. Dress. And guess who's getting the first cardigan I made? <laughs> I'm going to so, sew a dress to go with it. There you go. I have to actually find it. It's in this room somewhere. <laughs> she can't find it. It's going to be a treasure hunt. It's going to be ridiculous when I find it. I'm like, oh, of course it's there. Do you do that where you put things you're like, this is the perfect spot. Why did I never think of this before? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, I never thought of it before because it's not the perfect spot. Because I can't find it. it. <laughs> I do that all the time. <sighs> All the time. All right. Let's All right. We're going to clean up and then we are going to start on our snippets from the past segment. Hopefully right there, I managed to figure out how to do our little thing that I put on the screen when I did that years ago. <laughs> if not, I was just standing there like this. Like this. <laughs> kind of weird. Okay. <laughs> So we really wanted to take some time today um, in our snippets from the past segment, which we haven't done for a while. Yeah, so it's, it's always fun. That's that's we're going back to our roots. Now. There you go. Going back to the beginning. Yeah. And we wanted to talk about our love for our country and where that comes from. And um, that really comes from our ancestors. So Deborah and I, um, I have I have done our um kind of put together a pedigree chart of our side of the family that goes back 10 generations. And I, on our pedigree chart, I went and I marked all the places where our ancestral lines came into the United States, where we immigrated here. And in every single one of those places, which is a lot by the time you go back 10 generations, um, every single place that we came, um, it, the, our ancestors came because they wanted religious freedom. And that either they came as pilgrims or they came as pioneers in the 1800s. And um, we talk all the time about our heritage and our connection and how it really inspires our making. But I wanted to talk about how it inspires our living. And then Deborah's going to talk about how it inspires our making. So one of the things that defines our ancestors was this idea of industry they knew that the life that they were going to have was going to be built on their labor and their ingenuity and their um, their creativity and just the choices that they made. So they they just dug in and they made it happen. And they had a lot of lot of hardships and a lot of challenges. And um, they but they pulled through. And it's what is amazing to me is how. They didn't know when they were living their lives that what they did was going to have the impact that it has now generations later. Mm -hmm. They didn't know when they were, you know, farming or or spinning or, you know, we have sheep herders, we have um, milliners, we have um, all kinds of different and uh, what's the word I'm looking for industries that our ancestors participated in. They didn't know that when they were doing that, that it had any bearing on necessarily on what their, their great, 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 great grandchildren were going to be experiencing. And yet it does. I feel it every day. And I feel the responsibility to 
um, take care of what they left me and make it even better for the next generation. And um, as we're celebrating the 4th of July, the Independence Day this, this Saturday, I think it, it's not some nebulous out there thing, this idea of, of independence and freedom and um, responsibility. It's so personal to me because I feel so connected to my ancestors. And so much of that connection came because of the skills that they passed on from generation to generation. And that's kind of what we wanted to bring that into today. And so our ancestors, they, um, Emily was talking about their fortitude. Mm -hmm. I love their thrift and their industry. Mm -hmm. um, how there were skills that were needed for survival. You know, you needed to know how to sew. You needed to know how to knit. But they didn't just make things that were practical, but they also took mm -hmm. those things and they made them beautiful. And so they could take just whole pieces of cloth or random pieces and put them together in a really unappealing way. But when you're in the midst of times that are turbulent and hard, those are the times when we most need mm -hmm. to have things that inspire us and that are beautiful. And that is actually one of my missions in life is to create beauty. And I very often feel, um, I, I don't know that it's really outside pressure or I feel the other people think this, that it's frivolous or mm -hmm. pointless. Um, at times when it's like, oh, there's crisis happening or, you know, we're struggling to make ends meet. Why do we need to put any effort into crafts or, you know, but, mm -hmm. but I look around the world and the world isn't black and white and the world isn't you know, all barren of beauty. It is beauty. Nature is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And therefore God has created these things because they have a purpose. They bring us joy and they help to inspire us to be more than we are. And so um, with our ancestors, they didn't just spin and just sew, but they made things beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we have talked about how we made pillowcases because our grandmothers used to add delicate touches to them. And so we've kind of taken that inspiration and modernized it. But Emily has some examples from right. her family that she can show. So I wanted to show a couple of these things. But first, I have to share a quote really quick. This says, um, make your communities and towns lovely and lovable. For without love, who will they inspire to fight for them? I really loved that, yeah. that, that there's something more. There's a, there's a, there's a deep connection that comes from putting the effort in yeah. and, um, in whatever, in whatever arena you're in to put the effort in, to make it better than just passable. We're more than just taking in air and food and having shelter. That's, that's not living. Yeah. That's existing, mm -hmm. but we want to thrive and we want mm -hmm. to put down roots and we want to build communities and build mm. relationships that endure and build things that can outlive us just like our ancestors have done. And we can do it in really small yeah, ways. Yeah, it doesn't need too. to be very small ways. Yeah. So I love this. So here's, here's a small a, way. Here's um <laughs> I was over at my father-in-law's house a couple weeks ago and we were looking I was trying to help him find something. My mother-in-law passed away 12 years ago and um he wanted me to help him find something in her, her cedar chest. And so I got in there and I found all these treasures and he said, Oh, take those home. But here's a set of pillowcases. This and look at that crocheted border is here. We should put it upside down. So that that's a good idea. Fly. Yeah. There you go. Like that. That, that is so pretty with a scallop edge. Now this would not have been my mother-in-law who made this. This would have been her mother. Oh, so this is my so kid's sweet. great grandmother. Who made these? I love that. Isn't that pretty? There's a pair of those. And they're quite yellowed when you open them up. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, there's quite a bit of yellowing. Because they were used, which yes. I, I think is great. Oh, that's so pretty. Isn't that fun? So my grandmother, when I got married, mm -hmm. she gave me a set of pillowcases. And I said, oh, they're so pretty. I don't think I could ever use them. And she got upset. She said, you better. She said, if that work, you better use it. So I did. And you know what? We used them up. Mm -hmm. And I got to really enjoy them. And mm -hmm. then I went and cut out sections of the parts mm -hmm. that were less stained and made them into some doll clothes. I um, still have a, a couple of pair that are like but, that where I don't really use them, but I have them, but I should. I do feel like 
with a lot of things that we pack them away and never see them. Mm -hmm. And that's a waste of the effort that people have yeah. put into it so hand look, you know, lovingly. This is a tablecloth. I'm showing you one quarter of this tablecloth, but it has, isn't that a fun corner a shaping? It kind of scallops and then has these square corners with the baskets. That's really pretty. I love this so much. It is my favorite thing that I got from, well, no, it's not my favorite thing because I didn't bring down, um, he sent home their wedding quilt with Aww. me. And so um, it's their wedding quilt and I now have that. And he doesn't use these things. And um, he loved that I was just like, you know, so beaming when you see them. Gaga <laughs> over them. But look at that, just tiniest. This is this is one of the things I really love. Not all borders have to be fancy. Look how dainty and delicate and teeny. Yeah. It's a very little border. This is but one it's that so I think uses pretty. a 30 mm -hmm. weight crochet thread. Yes, it's very fine. That's pretty. But little borders are fun too. Anyway, and this is another pair that I found, and these have never been used. They are also handmade but they've never been used so they're brand new I'm trying to and it also has them. a scallop edge on one side oh yes it does and plain on the other they're not embroidered on the back they're just plain on the ones on the back well i thought i saw oh there's the scallop it's just a just little right yeah. there that's mm -hmm. so pretty yep just a little divot on those two here if i separate the back from the front you can see it better there you go Aren't those fun? They are pretty. I also brought home that quilt and I brought home um, a little doily, which was very, very yellow and stained. And I forgot to bring that down here, but I love it. I don't care that it's stained. It's in my family room. Um, displayed proudly because I love how beautiful it is. So the thing, yeah, things like that, don't they just connect you to other people? Um, we were talking again with some friends about how it's fun to knit. It's fun to crochet. How much more fun is it when there's something in that knitting or crocheting that it has an emotional or memory connection? Yeah. Like, oh, I remember when I bought this yarn on this trip. Yes. Or I remember when I was knitting this and this was happening in the world and this is connected to mm -hmm. that memory. You know, there's there's a lot that's kind of combined in that. But the thing that I get most of all is that we have the power to do things like this. You know, going back to what we were saying before, yeah, a pillowcase might seem like a necessity, but we have the power to take a pillowcase and turn it into something else. Mm -hmm. And that goes through anything in life. We have, we own our own situation. And there's some things we can't control, but there's a lot that we can. And what does this say about putting this on a pillow that you have somebody lay on? This tells mm -hmm. them, I love you. You're important. Mm -hmm. You matter. Sweet dreams. Like, I just want you to be happy. I, you know, it says more than I've just provided you with a pillowcase. And, so, <laughs> and when you do that for yourself, you're saying yes, the same yep. thing to yourself. You're yep. worthy of that. So speaking of which, mm -hmm. I made this for myself. I love I've, I think I've sh shown this before, but I thought it would go with our snippets from the past and mm -hmm. our theme today because I do love all things patriotic mm -hmm. and I like making quilts, but to make something that was just because I wanted to make it, mm -hmm. it wasn't a gift for somebody, it wasn't for a special occasion, I just was like, I want to have this to take on, on picnics or whatever. I just pulled out all of my red, white, and blue fabrics, and I decided to make my love favorite it. blocks. I love pinwheel blocks, and I love stars. Those are my two favorites, so I combined Same. them together. And then I made a center block mm -hmm. that I kind of just made up that oh. represented our American flag, and it's actually, there's four of them, and they rotate around, and then added some stars to it. So and these are applique on, right? Yes, these were okay. these are needle turn applique. Um, so we are we're we're quite patriotic, but we also think that not just for America that it's it is important mm -hmm. to bloom where you're planted. Mm -hmm. You know where where you are to to love that and find mm -hmm. all of the good things about it and strengthen um, where you are and make things better where you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
I think that we may have mentioned this before. In fact, I know we have, but I'm going to say it again anyway. So the name Emily, the, the uh, definition or the meaning behind it is industrious. And my name yep. means bee. And that is the... Um, like honeybee, right? Honeybee. Mm -hmm. And that is the... Just a minute. Our state. We have a beehive. Yeah, symbol. symbol. Mm -hmm. Beehive. Which our state symbol is industry mm -hmm. it, you know at the the motto there's a lot of things to go with as in the virtue have... industry not as in big industry but no. as in having that virtue of being industrious yeah so we kind yeah. of have that connection there. i guess our parents had a theme when they were naming us well also <laughs> amelia well yeah our sister amelia <laughs> emily and amelia are, are virtually the, the same, same name. root name but my parents <laughs> didn't know that well so. not just that but mm -hmm. um wasn't no yanith is her middle name. Mm -hmm, which and is Janet. Mm -hmm. That was her first name. She was adopted from mm -hmm. El Salvador. I'm just trying to remember. Her first name so. was Sonia. And Yanath was her middle name. And, she and they kept that. Yanath mm -hmm. for her middle name. Okay. Anyway, I love it. But I guess it was meant to be. <laughs> All right. Let's move on yes. to our ending, to our shop update. Yes. To your shop update. I have some fun things to share. I have a pile here. Let me grab them. And so in our the Narnia theme that we were talking about earlier, because I've also just finished reading The Silver Chair, I'm embarrassed to say that I have never read all the Narnia books. And so I have read up to halfway through The Silver Chair, like four times. But finally, I finished The Silver Chair, so I'm moving on. And I'm reading them in publication order. Mm -hmm. But I brought back my Narnia collection. So here's a little set of minis so you can see the five... I kind of have two sub collections. So this is Narnia Deep. And this is Once a King or Queen, The Stone Table, Beyond the Wardrobe, Not a Tame Lion, and Deeper Magic. I also have them here in full skeins, except for I just sold out of all of my Deeper Magic. But I will restock that. So here's the other four. And I love this one so much. Look at that. So you knit yourself uh -huh. a sweater. I knit a Sapilla sweater out of these two, doing the color work in this one and the body in that one. Yep. It was very, very pretty. Yep. So that's, again, Not a Tame Lion, Once a King or Queen, Beyond the Wardrobe, and the Stone Table. And then I have another collection, which I call Narnia Soft, and that's these three. And this one is Tea with Tumness. Which... And Nikki just finished a pair of socks yep. just recently with that. She is mm -hmm. Clara Pegatee on Instagram. Yep. Tea with Tumness is actually one of my really, really popular colorways. Turkish Delight and Care Paravel. Okay, this one, we just got to get in here. <laughs> Look at those. It's oh. a fun one, isn't it? Yes, when you posted this recently, I was like, oh, maybe I need to get some of that one. <laughs> oh, those are those fun. Those are so pretty. Anyway, so all of these, including the mini skein sets, are in my shop um, and available. I'm just doing them on Classic Sock right now, but maybe we'll be doing some DK. So we'll see how that goes, but those are all there. I still have a couple of gathering shells and Sanditon sets. Um, hopefully still by the time this video comes out. And I have a couple of Kitty and Lydia. And I have determined my next collection, which will be The Hunger Games. I put it up to a vote on Instagram and that was the winner. So oh. Hunger Games coming up soon. That'll I'm really excited about that one. <laughs> That's all we have for you, folks. Yep. That's all there it's is. been great to visit with you, though. We hope you have a happy, safe, healthy week and that you enjoy all of your making. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.